Hello, and welcome to Learning the Social Sciences. Today we're going to be covering an introduction to psychological disorders. So what is a psychological disorder? Well, it's defined as a harmful dysfunction in which behaviors are maladaptive, unjustifiable, and atypical. However, what behaviors are maladaptive? What behaviors are actually typical if you actually dig deeper into it? So maladaptive behavior is a behavior that is destructive to oneself or to others. If you do not leave your house because of a fear, then that's a maladaptive behavior. An unjustifiable behavior is a behavior that has no rational justification. One has to see the history of the person, cultural practices, and more to see if there is a reason that actually has a rational foundation that may be able to explain this behavior. And then there's disturbing behavior. That's the behavior that is troublesome to others. So psychopathology is any pattern of emotions, behavior, or thoughts inappropriate to the situation and leading to the personal distress or the inability to achieve important goals. Abnormal behavior and or psychological dysfunction is psychopathology. What people use to refer to as mental illness so the history of understanding abnormal behavior. People have been chronicling and attempting to explain abnormal behavior for 4,000 years. The ancient Babylonians stated that it was demons and you can go through culture after culture after culture to try to figure out what they were doing. But usually the quote unquote treatments for that were pretty benign. Um, the Greeks, they thought that it was a faulty thought process. Now, some did go and try a little bit more with what they were doing, and they would cut holes into skulls, for example, to let demons out. And this is a practice that even reappeared in Europe in the 15th century. Europe, during this time period, treated people horribly who had psychological disorders. They would torture them, they would execute them, trying to get demons out of them, um, and do just a whole long list of cruel things to these people. However, over time, things started to mellow out and people were being institutionalized, um, but still in these institutions, they were tied to chains um, and put in horrible, damp locations or just horrible locations um, to suffer even more. Until this guy came around by the name of Pinel, who sought to reform the French institutions and to form places where these people can actually have a sense of healing. Uh, in the United States, we also had somebody, Dorothea Dix, who did the same thing, trying to go and create places for these people to live that were not horrible places where the person could actually find healing. Here is one of the very famous paintings uh, where Pinnell is taking the chains off of people that are in institutions. If you look at this painting, you see people with handcuffs on and also these belts around their waists, keeping them restrained all day, every day. And he stopped this practice in France in the late 1700s. So we have the medical model that comes out because of Penel and others. And they start to look at mental illness in terms of a disease. Uh, the medical model is that mental disorders are diseases that are diseases of the mind that like ordinary physical diseases have objective causes and require scientific treatment and in most cases can be cured. The medical model led to the creation of asylums or mental focused hospitals. In this atmosphere, many patients improved by resting, doing simple, useful work, and working with the staff to figure out new behaviors or root causes, depending on what the medical model they were following within their own asylum. However, this kind of situation turned out to be better for a lot of people. Now, there are critiques, though, of this. So one is that it focuses really on nature and nothing on nurture. Modern psychologists do not think that we should solely follow the medical model. With this approach, the disorder is treated as a disease, which leads to a doctor knows best approach. The therapist takes on all the responsibility for diagnosing and correcting the problem. And with it, we also start placing psychiatrists over psychologists because psychiatrists are able to prescribe medicine. 
In this model, the patient becomes a passive recipient of medica medication and advice. They are no longer in control of anything. So a new model has come out, the biopsychosocial model. It's a contemporary perspective that assumes biological, psychological, and sociocultural factors combine to interact to produce psychological disorders. The medical model is one third of this model. It analyzes your genetic disposition or your heredity uh, and your susceptibility to the disorder based off of that. The psychological component looks at how the person thinks. What are their thought patterns? What goes into that? Do they have any coping skills? What are their coping skills? What are their family relations like? What is their self-esteem like? It takes all of this into um, into, yeah, the process to try to figure out what is going on. The social component examines their role and expectations within society. So are there social or cultural beliefs that can affect these behaviors? How are they with their peers, their family circumstances, their friends' circumstances, their family relationships? So this model is the trifold model for looking at a person that may or may not have a mental illness. So the social cognitive behavioral approach. As psychology has evolved, theories which were originally at odds have now been combined to offer more thorough explanations. For example, the cognitive psychology and behaviorism. Cognitive psychology looks inward, emphasizing mental processes. Behaviorism looks outward and emphasizes the influences of the environment that we're in. So psychologists from these perspectives see these two as complementary and add that cognitions and behaviors usually happen in social contests requiring then a social perspective for trying to figure out what is going on. So now what is an actual psychological disorder? Psychological disorders are persistently harmful thoughts, feelings, and actions. When behavior is deviant, distressful, or dysfunctional, psychologists label it as a disorder. So there's three classical symptoms of severe mental illness. Disorders that demonstrate extreme abnormal behaviors are more easily identifiable and detected, and so they're usually addressed earlier, while others can be more subtle. When trying to diagnose a patient, doctors look for three classic symptoms of severe psychopathology. Hallucinations, false sensory experiences that a person is experiencing, delusions, extreme disorders that involve persistent false beliefs. For example, somebody going and assuming they're always being followed and maybe even seeing somebody following them that nobody else does. Affect, the emotion, characteristically depressed, anxious, maybe in a manic state or no emotional response at all. These are the three classic symptoms of severe mental illness. So how do we classify disorders? Well, we have the DSM-5, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. And every so often we do have a new edition come out. That's why it is the DSM-5. It means that it is the fifth edition. So psychologists classify disorders according to their symptoms. They describe the disorder. They predict the future course of the disorder. They treat the disorder appropriately and they provide a springboard for research into the disorder's causes. So for example, if you want to know more about a specific disorder, you can go and look into the DSM-5 and find a lot of information about it to gain some assistance and some wisdom. So this has been an introduction to psychological disorders. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you much. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.